What do you do when a system does not work? A, you try to fix it, or B, you can build your own. India has chosen option B, it seems. It has long criticized Western indices and surveys on democracy, but now patience has run out. So reports say India is publishing its own, a homegrown democracy index. An Indian think tank is making it. Reports say it could be published in the next few weeks, maybe even before the general election. Now, we don't know what the methodology will be or what indicators will be used or which countries will be ranked, but we will say this. Such a move was necessary. You cannot let Western yardsticks measure the world. If you do, the problem is obvious. The West will look good, the rest will not. And this is a big problem. A lot of people factor these reports into big decisions, like investors looking at a stock market bet, or companies looking to open factories, or even tourists looking to travel. So these rankings are like report cards for countries. A good one will give you tangible benefits, a bad one will keep investors away. So it's important to look at these rankings closely to see how fair or unfair they are. Let's look at three such recent indices. The first is the Liberal Democracy Index. It was published by Sweden's VDEM Institute. And where does India rank? At 104. Now listen to this carefully. India's rank is 104. Guess who is just above India? Niger. Let me repeat that for you. Niger ranks above India in the VDEM Index on Liberal Democracies. To put that in context, Niger is currently ruled by a military junta. Their president is under house arrest since July 2023, yet Niger ranks above India. So does Kuwait. Last month, Kuwait dissolved its parliament. Guess why? Because some lawmaker insulted the emir. It's constitutionally illegal to criticize the emir, so the entire parliament was dissolved. That country ranks above India. I guess when you have oil, democracy has a different definition. The next index is on happiness. India ranks 126th on that list. Look at all the countries above it. Pakistan is at 108. This is a country where inflation is higher than the average age, where terrorists attack every day, where generals rig elections, and where the IMF decides the budget. I guess that's what Pakistanis are happy about, being broke and unsafe. Also above India is Myanmar, a country that has been at civil war for seven decades. Ukraine is ranked 105. Palestine ranked 103. Iran is ranked 100. We are honestly lost for words here. Ukraine is being invaded. Palestine does not have statehood. And Iran is ruled by a supreme leader. Yet people there are happier than Indians. Finally, we have press freedom. This one is published by the RSF, Reporters Without Borders. India is ranked 161 on this list of 180 countries. Press freedom, 161. Afghanistan is at 152. That's Taliban's Afghanistan. Let me show you what press freedom looks like there. That's press freedom for you. That's not all. Pakistan ranks above India. So do the UAE, Brunei, Somalia and Uganda. You don't have to be an expert to know that this is wrong. These rankings cannot possibly be true. But why does it keep happening? One problem is the sample size. It's often too small. Consider the World Happiness Index. They sample just 1,000 people every year. For a country like India, that's nothing. 1,000 out of 1.4 billion people. And it's not just about the size. It's also the nature of the population. You have regional differences. You have religious differences. You have socioeconomic differences. So 1,000 is too small. It will never give you the true picture. Same with press freedom. The survey takes 10 responses from each country. So if the methodology is not working, why are these surveys still being published? Because it suits the Western agenda. We looked at the top 10 countries on all three lists. Four of them are the same. They figure in all three indices. Three others feature in at least two lists. So it's basically the same countries leading all these reports, the same Western countries. So why would they stop publishing it? Which is why having a homegrown index is not a bad idea. It's not about one upping the other side. It's about offering a different system, a different perspective.
maybe for a change, we can factor in the gun deaths in America, or the hijab bans in Europe, or the brutal migration laws, or the restrictions on abortion. Then it would be a fair survey.